a lot of nonsense. We've heard all this before. Ah, Patterson, Patterson. Always the skeptic. Never believe in anything you can't see or feel. The best things to believe in. Yeah. Not always. I'm a practical man. Tall stories aren't in my life. Thank you, brother. I was with Ashby when he died last month. He swore everything he said was true. He says there's a tribe in the depths of the Amazon jungle. They're remnants of the Incas. He says that they have a miracle working juju that can bring the dead back to life. We've heard yarns like that before. Mm -hmm. Well, he got a few bearings, a rough location. He made a map. I've got it. I'm going there. Like to come with me, Colin? Through me? Yeah, interesting adventure. I don't know. I might. When do you want to start? Next week. Oh, that's far too soon. Uh, time enough for an old traveler like you. Telephone for you, doctor, in the hall. Thank you. Well, uh, think it over and let me know. Have a look at that map. Feel like going? You know, uh, I think I do. What to be careful, you know. Moran's a strange fellow. One of the most brilliant brains of the century, but there's a family taint. Several of them have been sent away. Yes, so I've heard. But that doesn't worry me. I can look after myself. Besides, there's nothing much wrong with Moran. Any better? You don't look it. I'm all right. Don't think a bit of jungle fever is going to bother me, do you? I've had it too often. Colin, listen. What is it? The tom tom. Look. That's the mound. There was an Ashby's map. <laughs> Looks as if he was right after all.
Jungle fever, all right. Looks as if he's had it. Uh, that, that's about the about plant, sacrifice, and miracle. Where'd that little germ come from? Come on, car. I don't know that. Push that. But I want to buy you, brother. I will just go wow. Well. Come on. Got to get him moving somehow. Get him on the stretcher. Run, run. Right. Right. part of the plant and from it I'll get the serum to bring the dead back to life. She won't have died in vain.
Morning, ma'am. Sorry to trouble you. Sergeant Bolton. What do you want? Well, now, just a word with the doctor, if you don't mind. He's very busy. That's what we'd all like to be. Still, I won't keep him more than five minutes. He doesn't like being disturbed. And I do instead. My instructions is to see the doctor. All right. Come in. Wait here, I'll tell him. Thank you, ma'am. He'll see you. Come this way. Sergeant Bolton. I'm sorry to bother you, sir. I don't like being interrupted when I'm working, but uh, if it's important, I suppose it can't be helped. Sit down. I prefer to stand, thank you, sir. Uh, what can I do for you? We've been asked to make inquiries about a young woman named Curtis, Susan Curtis, who's been staying with friends at Cranchurch. Oh, well, what about her? She disappeared, sir, yesterday evening. Oh? Vanished as if the earth had swallowed her up. Mm. I'm sorry, but... Can't quite see why you have to tell me about it. We had a report she'd been in this neighborhood, and we thought that if she was suffering from loss of memory or something of that sort, she might have called here to ask her way, or for help, maybe. I'm quite sure no woman's been here, but I'll ask my housekeeper. Perhaps she had her own reasons for disappearing. She told her friends when she went out that she'd be back for dinner at the usual time. Seems to be a sensible enough girl. No troubles of any sort. She didn't know anyone around here. Very strange. Uh, Mrs. Santa, has any young woman been here asking her way or making inquiries? I haven't seen one. Why? Uh, Sergeant Bolton's investigating a disappearance. Uh, sorry, I can't help you, Sergeant. Oh, just in case, sir, here's a uh, photograph. Good looker, isn't she, sir? Well, as a scientist, I'm more interested in things with six legs than two. No doubt I'm in a minority. Hope you'll succeed in tracing the young woman. I hope so, sir. Good day. Oh, thank you, Mum. I'm sorry to have disturbed you. That's all right. Good day, Mum. Good day.
indulgence at the enormous expense we present to you the beauty show of the century the south sea island bells this way this way ladies and gents for the human form divine straight from the blue lagoon see the tantalizing horrors of honolulu over above now come along ladies and gents this is a wonderful chance now step up ladies and gents step up What's the matter with you? Nothing, nothing like this has ever been seen before. Straight from the Blue Lagoon, all for above. That's better. How about you, sir? You look a bit down in the mouth. We won't tell the wife. <laughs> you, sir, never mind what the butler saw. Come and take a look for yourself inside. Now step up, ladies and gents. Step up. That's the idea, sir. This one. Never let her wear the trousers, sir. You'll regret it for the rest of your life. <laughs> hey, that's it. Have another go. Might do better next time. And that's only a sample, ladies and gentlemen. Now come inside and see the real thing. The show's starting. The show's just starting. Yeah, hey. Cold in your breath when you're fired. Steady on, steady on. Hello, Sally. You'll catch it if he sees you over here. Oh, I don't count, so Give me an orange drink. I say, this belongs to you. Me? Yes, you won it. Hey. Now look. No, really, just now in the rifle range. I was looking at you the whole time I was firing. Lucky I didn't kill someone. Go on, take him. He won't bite. Oh, he's rather sweet. Orange, please. How's business? Well, not too good for us. We're leaving tomorrow. Oh, you're not going away. Ninety miles away to Cheriton. Oh, what a shame. I won't see you again. Well, we've been here for a fortnight. You should have come before. Now you tell me. Look, I've got a little place, a garage, not far from here, near Dunsford. You know it? What about letting me run you to Sheraton tomorrow? Oh, I'd love that, but I had to travel with the show. Oi there, Sally! What do you think you're doing there? Oh, I should have been here. What do you think you're doing there? Get back up on that stand! What is this? So am I. Oh, just a moment. Pass off. Look, this young lady was having a drink with me. It was my fault. I don't care whose fault it was. Her place is up there on that stand and nowhere else. Go on, you heard me! Just a moment. Uh, now you've done it! Are you all right? I wasn't going to have him talking to you like that. I'm sorry if I've made things difficult for you. You'll make things difficult for yourself if you don't go away. They'll all be around here in a minute. Well, I'll stay and see you're okay. No, thanks, just the same, but you'll only make it worse. Please get out. Good night. Good night. I do anything for you? You've done quite enough already, thank you. Have I? It's you. I didn't recognize you upside down. You haven't gone away after all. No, I got the sack. Fired, thanks to you. Did you really? Good. I mean, well, let me take it back. Now, come and sit down. I'll clear these things away. Make yourself comfortable, if you can. Isn't it wonderful? I was thinking of you miles away. And here you are. How'd you get here? I walked and walked and walked. Oh, poor kid. Had any breakfast? Yes, I did, before I left. And what about a cup of coffee? Oh, I'd love one. 
Coffee coming up. Glad I had this going. I'm sorry about last night. I didn't think you'd get fired. Oh, forget it. I hated the job anyway. I'll soon find something else. Mm, I feel very responsible. Is there anything I can do to help? You can get me some sugar, please. I only came here because, well, I don't know anyone else. Mm, that suits me. No competition. What sort of job are you looking for? Oh, I can do anything. Groom a horse, dig a garden, scrub the floor, wash dishes, and I can dance the hula hula. Mm, very nice, too. The only trouble is that the demand for hula hula dancers has dropped off a bit in this village. The vicar's wife, you know. I've got it. Dr. Moran. Who's he? Oh, he's a scientific fella. He's quite a big noise around here. I take care of his car for him. Well, why should he give me a job? Well, he's got a housekeeper who does most of the work for him. It's time she had some help. Oh, perhaps she doesn't want any. No harm in trying. How far is it? Nice and near. About a mile. I'd better get going then. Okay, I'll run you there in the car. Oh, will you? Thank you. You sure you don't mind? Of course not. Come on. Mom, I'm going out for half an hour. Okay. to the right. Want your bag? No, I'd better leave it. I haven't got the job yet. I'll wait here. By the way, he's got a native servant named Tanga. Don't let him frighten you. He's quite harmless. Good luck. Master, you come in. I tell him. You come, please. Dr. Moran? Yes, come in. What can I do for you? My name's Sally Norton. I'm looking for work. The young man at the garage said that you might have something for me. Oh? Did he say why he thought that? Well, he said you had an old housekeeper who might need some help. She wouldn't thank him for saying that. No, I'm sorry. I'm afraid there's nothing, Miss Norton. Oh. I'm sorry, too. Wait. Would you be prepared to live in? Yes, I don't see why not. Well, uh, let's uh, sit down and talk about it. Well? He's given me a job and to help him with the housework and live in. What did I tell you? He's rather a strange person, though. There's a funny look in his eye. Oh, don't let that frighten you. And that native made me jump. I've never been in a house like that before. Well, if you don't like it, you can always leave. Yes, of course. And we'll be seeing each other, I hope. Well, give me my bag. I'll carry it up. Oh, don't bother. I've carried it this far. Another few yards won't make any difference. Thanks, Jack. If you ever need me, Sally. I'll come a running. See you soon. To engage a girl off a doorstep without knowing who she is or anything about her? Well, it's been plain for some time that you need help, Margaret. I don't want help. You've been overdoing it lately. It's affected your nerves. You know, you're not very strong, Margaret. It's not overwork that's affecting my nerves. Doing you good to have someone young and charming around you. 
Are you sure you don't mean around you? I wish you wouldn't be so stupidly suspicious, Margaret. Not stupidly, James. I'm not arguing about it. I've engaged her. Her name's Sally Norton. There she is. Be nice to her, Margaret. Margaret. Be nice to her. Very well. Miss Norton? Yes. Come in. Thank you. Is the place? Sir. <coughs> Freeman, you better stay here and go over the ground with a tooth comb and see if you can find anything else. Right, sir. Bolton, you come back to the station with me, will you? Right, sir. We'll be back, back later. Sorry. Now, that's the spot we've just seen. Now, there's Colonel Battersby's house, about three miles. That's Sir George Mortimer, and that's Dr. Moran. Hmm. So Dr. Moran's is nearest? Yes, sir, by about half a mile. Right. Well, let's start with him. Well, I saw him the other day, sir, but he couldn't tell me anything. You didn't search the grounds, did you? No, sir. Better do that at once. If this is really a case of murder, the body might be hidden anywhere around here. Let's get cracking. Well, you might leave word where we're going in case Freeman wants to contact us. Yes, sir. Yes? Good morning, miss. This is Inspector Brownlow. Could we see the doctor, please? Yes, will you come in? Thank you. Come in. Yes, what is it? Oh, there's two police officers to see you. What, again? They were here last week. Oh, all right, let them come in. Can you come in, please? Thank you. Yes, but not now. I'll tell you about that later. All right, sir. Yes? Oh, sorry to disturb you, Dr. Moran. I'm Detective Inspector Brownlow of the County Police. Well, what is it? It's about that girl who disappeared last week, sir. I've already told Sergeant Bolton. I know nothing whatever about it. I know that, sir, but there's been a further development. You see, we have reason to believe the girl was attacked at a spot not far from here. Oh, I see. Well, I still don't see what it's got to do with me. Well, we'd like permission to search your ground, sir. You see, if it's a case of murder, her body might be hidden anywhere around here. Hmm. Yes, well, I suppose there are a couple of sheds where a body might be hidden. Look, anywhere you like. Thank you, sir. Hello? Yes? Uh, it's for you. Oh. Someone named Freeman from the police station. Oh, thanks, sir. Hold it a second, Freeman, will you? Sergeant, you might go out and take a look at the sheds, will you? Very good, sir. Yes, Freeman? No, well, I didn't expect you would. No. Right, well, I shall be coming back shortly. Yes, right. Bye. That's interesting, sir. What is? This. Nasty thing to come up against. Pretty sharp. I'll take that if you don't mind. No offense, I hope, sir. <laughs> no. I was just wondering where it came from. Some savage country, I suppose. If it interests you, it's from the upper reaches of the Amazon jungle. And as far as I'm aware, there's no other like it in existence. Really? Well, uh, I'm sorry to have taken up so much of your time, sir. Good day. Good day. Nothing there, sir. Oh, all right. Come on.
ready? With this, our people make live the dead. Master, this is good. Yes, but with our magic, I can improve it. You think so? Remember, I decide. Yes, Master. So what? I've been waiting here 35 minutes. Don't I get a drink? What do you want? Whiskey. Jimmy, two whiskeys. Give me a whiskey, please. Are you a member, sir? Don't be silly. Give me a whiskey. I don't know what you're making such a fuss about it for. You weren't waiting out in the street. Waiting out on the street? I wouldn't wait out on the street, not for you or anyone. Oh, don't bring that up again. Well, where are we going? What do you mean, where are we going? We're staying here. What is this joint? You told me we were going out. Yes, we would have done if you'd have been on time. We're too late to go to a show. But if this is your idea of an evening's entertainment, it certainly isn't mine. Now, look, if you'd have been oh, on time... Oh, why don't you get lost? That suits me. You want a mug. Good night. Hey, you haven't paid for the drinks. You pay for them. Why, the dirty shrist. How about that? He don't pay, you do. Guess again. I call police. Call them. Wait a minute. Can I be of any assistance? No, you can't. How much? Five shillings, please. Thank you. May I join you? It's not much fun drinking alone. Why not? You're playing. Cigarettes? Thank you. 
Well, what's your racket? Talent spotter for the movies. Do I look like one? All men are talent spotters one way or another. Mm. <coughs> Filthy, isn't it? Yes, we can't drink this stuff. Let's, let's go somewhere else. Where? But my car is parked close by. Let's go to one of those roadhouses, make an evening of it. Now, I know you're a talent spotter. I want to go home. Uh, don't be frightened. What's the matter? You trust me, don't you? Come on. What's the game? Why have you brought me here? Get her ready. Margaret, why aren't you in bed? Do you come back? Another of your little temporary absences. Did you have a nice time with whoever you were with? Look, I'm not in the mood for a scene. I suppose now I'm only a housekeeper. I have no right to ask questions. None whatever. You leave me in this place for days and nights. There's something wrong in it. I know there is. You're talking nonsense. You're overwrought. Why, why don't you go back to your room? Haven't you even a little bit of feeling left? I've told you a hundred times that all that's over between us. Now, you'd save yourself a lot of pain by accepting it. Ever since you came back from that horrible journey five years ago, you've been different. Yes, you're right, Margaret. I've changed. I believe you're doing something wicked. There's that iron door that I mustn't go through. I dream of it. What does it lead to? You know perfectly well it leads to my laboratories. And I allow no one to see my experiments. There was a time when you trusted me. My dear Margaret, I've never trusted you or any other woman with anything I didn't want anyone else to know. There's evil all round me. It's here tonight. I can feel it. Come here, Margaret. For some time I've been thinking it might be better if you went away. You're getting troublesome. I don't like troublesome people. Don't send me away. Let me stay, please. If you ever try to pry into any concern of mine, it'll be the last thing you do. Now, go back to your room.
lives compared with what I'm giving to the world. It's turning death into life. Death into life. Sally, didn't expect you so early. Do you mind if I finish this job I'm on? Oh, not a bit. Can I help? Oh, you certainly can. Know anything about cars? Not a thing. Good. I hate mechanically minded women. Now, you see that hole in the scuttle there? I want you to push, push this wire through, and then I'll grab it from inside, okay? Just a minute. Hmm. Looks almost too easy. Okay, go on. Go on pushing. Right, I've got it. Will you, will you pass me the pliers? They're, they're on the ground somewhere. Come on, can't you find them? Oh, they were not on the ground. Oh, it doesn't matter where they were. Let's have them. Let's have that light, will you, so I can see? No, bring it near my head. And shine it away from my eyes. Is that better? Yeah. Oh, for the love of Pete, can't you hold that light steady? It's a bit hot here, isn't it? I don't think so. Sally, have... Pass me the screwdriver, will you? How about us getting married? Are you crazy? This one? No, 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 not that one. The small one. Why am I crazy? Well, how long have we known each other? Two weeks. I fell for you in two minutes. Out! Oh, for Pete's sake, can't you hold that light steady? Well, I'm doing my best. It's not my fault I don't know anything about cars. Here, take this. And don't pull it tight, if you can just manage that. I don't know why I spent my afternoon off coming to see you. I try to help you and all I get is abuse. Well, I'm going for a walk by myself and you can finish the job on your own. Oh, for heaven's sake, don't pull that. You'll louse up everything. Will I? Good. There's only one thing for it. When we're married, you'll just have to teach me all about cars. You're late. Sorry, Mrs. Santa. Won't you please come back at the proper time? I said I was sorry. I heard you. One moment. Margaret, you're tired. Why don't you go to your room and have a little rest? I'm not tired. Sometimes one's tired without knowing it. A little sleep. This girl seems to think she can do what she likes. Perhaps you told her so. Nothing of the kind. Margaret, do as I say. Go to your room. I'm sorry you were spoken to like that. Oh, that's all right. I'm afraid Mrs. Santa doesn't like me very much. That needn't worry you. Come with me to my study. I want to talk to you. I decided to send Mrs. Santa away. Send her away? Yes, her behavior recently has convinced me she's in need of a long rest. I shall uh, make all the arrangements tomorrow, and I shall want you to take her place. Me? Yes. I'm sorry, Dr. Moran, but I can't. Why? Please don't ask me to explain. It's just that I don't feel that I can. But you must have some reason, or is it just that you dislike me? No, of course not. The duties are not very onerous. You have plenty of time to yourself. Yes, I know. 
Then why do you hesitate? Isn't it a reasonably good offer? Of course it is, but... Think it over and let me know tomorrow. Yes. Yes, I will. I'm sure if you think it over carefully, you'll be able to change your mind. I want you to accept. Dr. Moran, please don't think I'm not grateful to you for giving me a job and taking me in as you did. Then why not let that weigh the scales a little? the end. away and wants me to take her place. And I can't stay there alone with him. I see what you mean. No, it's not just that. He scares me. I saw it all in his eyes when he was talking to me. I've got to leave there tomorrow morning. Mm, tomorrow nothing. You're leaving tonight. I'll get a room fixed up. Oh, no, I'll be all right till tomorrow. Besides, all my things are there. As long as I'm away before Mrs. Santa leaves. Well, I'll pick you up first thing. No, Jack, I'll come straight here. All right, I'll be waiting. I'd better go now because he doesn't know I've come out. I'll see you tomorrow. I won't go. I'm afraid you've no option. I'm making the arrangements tomorrow. You surely don't think I can't see it all. See what? That you're in love with her. If you can call it love. Oh, I do wish you wouldn't be so absurd. That's why you want me to make way for her. Why will you persist in these middle-aged jealousies? I'm very tired of them. Because I still love you. In spite of the way you've treated me. My dear Margaret, to be brutally frank, to me you're a thing of the past. You know very well I've only kept you on here out of charity. How dare you? My dear Margaret, like many women who were once attractive, if you will ignore the passage of time. Well, you can't where men are concerned. Santa's gone to her room. She's not very well. She 
doesn't want to be disturbed. Oh, very well, Doctor. I shall be working in my laboratory all evening. I shan't want anything else. Shall I pour it for you? Yes. How's Mrs. Santa this morning? Still not well. Oh, shall I take you anything? No, no, don't. She's uh, asleep. Oh. Uh, Sally. Yes? Have you thought over what I talked about yesterday? Yes, Doctor. Well? I'm sorry, Dr. Moran, but I'm afraid I can't accept your offer. Oh. So you've made up your mind, eh? Yes. I see. In that case, you can leave as soon as you wish. Sorry to inconvenience you, Doctor. No, that's all right. Thank you. Is that? But there's a little matter of salary to be settled. I don't want you to go without that. Well, that, that's all right. I didn't give you proper notice after all. Oh, I insist. I have it ready for you. Come and get it. Did you really think you were going to get away as easily as that? What do you mean? Well, surely you can't be in such a tremendous hurry. Sit down for a minute. No. Well, one might almost think you were frightened of me. Sit down. Now, what are you rushing off for in this extraordinary fashion? Surely I'm free to go if I want to. Yes, but why do you want to? One reason is, I'm getting married. Getting married? Who to? That's my business. And mine? Who is it? If you must know, it's Jack Venner. Venner? Don't be ridiculous. I'm going to marry Jack Venner. You're not. Oh, I won't listen to any more of this. I'm going. Sally, listen to me. I love you. I loved you the first time I ever saw you. I know I'm much older than you, but it's happened many times before. That's why I took you in. And that's why you're not going to leave this house. You can't stop me. No doubt you've heard of men who give their lives to bring something to the world. Well, that's what I've done. I'm going to be acclaimed as the greatest man on earth. And you're going to share that greatness with me. You must have often wondered what's behind that iron door. I'm going to show you. Come here. Inspector Brownlow? Oh, Brownlow. You mean you heard from Rio? Well? Moran was killed in a party. So Moran was there. And Carling was killed. A plant? Sort of a plant. <laughs> That's hardly believable. Well. Well, thanks for the information anyway. That's all right. That's going to be enough help. Mm -hmm. There you go. Bye. Yeah. I've just heard from Sergeant Bolton, sir. Mm -hmm. They found a torn off bit of material corresponding to the dress the girl was wearing in a hedge about 50 yards from where she was attacked, in a direct line with Moran's house. What? Uh -huh. 
It looks as if she must have been dragged or carried along that line. I've had an interesting piece of news, too. Get the car. We're going there. Quite, sir. Into the laboratories at Cranfield. Afternoon, Bolton. Let's see this bit of material you found. Here it is, sir. Hmm. You sure it was from the dress she was wearing? No doubt about it, sir. The people she stayed with at Cranchurch identified it at once. Good enough. Now I want to see where you found it. Good evening, Dr. Moran. Can I have a word with you? Certainly. Come inside. I've come for Sally. Sally? She isn't here. She left this morning. Left? Yes. She said she wanted to get away early, so I let her go. Must have been about 11 o'clock. But she arranged to come straight to me. Didn't she? No, I've been waiting all afternoon. She wouldn't have gone away without seeing me first. I don't know anything about that. All I know is that she left this morning. I don't believe you, Dr. Moran. I don't believe Sally's left this house. What do you mean? I believe she's still here and I want to see her right now or I'm going to the police. You must be crazy to come here and talk to me like this. Well, which do I do? You get out. If you want to go to the police, go. They'll only laugh at you. I don't think so. I have nothing more to say to you. Good evening. Sally was scared, Dr. Moran. She was sure there were strange things happening in this house. It might be a good thing if those ideas were looked into. in the Amazon jungle, there are people who put their hands into the mouth of death and snatch its victims back. I learned their secret. I told you, the world will ring with my name, the man who can bring back the dead. You're mad. You think so? I'm going to show you. I'm putting it to the real test. Come with me. No. No. You'll see something that no one in the whole civilized world has seen before. I'm going to share my triumph over the greatest moment of my life. You mustn't be frightened, Sally. If you don't, come on. All right. All right. Good. Good. I'm bringing you here. Where's Sergeant Bolton? I'm afraid he's not here, sir. Can I help you? Oh, it's very urgent. Do you know where I can find him? Well, he's out with Inspector Brown now on the Cran Church Road near Knott's Lane. You might get him there. Oh, thanks.
Margaret. Margaret. Speak to me. Speak. Only the body. No mind. No. Oh, people cheated me. They gave me only half their secret. Our secret not for you. Failed. Failed. Only the body. No brain. The brain for us only. Still dead. Only the body. No mind. Margaret. Oh, they cheated me! They cheated me! Open up! You come. I take you. Go on, open up, will you? Inspector! I think we can get in here. Bolton, go ahead. Destroy your idol, as you've destroyed me. 